we're going to go ahead and we're going to remove the side panel. I'm going to pull the door gasket and remove the cover. I'm going to remove the two Phillips screws behind the side panel. going to remove the dash by pulling on it. I'm going to unplug the switches behind the dash. I'm going to remove the two Phillips screws under the hood release. I'm going to release the diagnostic plug by pushing on the ears on both sides and sliding it backwards. I'm going to remove this small metal cover, 10 millimeter. I'm going to remove the steering column cover plastic. I'm going to remove the three Phillips screws from the bottom. We're going to remove the small cover for the uh, tilt lever. We're going to remove the steering column cover plastic by applying pressure to the seam with our thumb while pulling down on the plastic, wiggling it a little bit to make it release. We'll now move it over the tilt lever and we have access to the ignition plug. We're going to need to unplug the ignition plug. That's the blue plug at the back of the ignition switch. I'm going to press the clip and remove the plug. We're going to plug in the ignition plug end of our T-harness into the ignition plug. We're going to make sure it locks. Now we're going to plug the ignition switch harness into the other end of our T-harness. We're going to make sure it clicks and locks. We're going to ground our ground ring to this 10 millimeter stud behind the dash under the ignition switch. Here's the ground ring. It's on the ignition harness, black wire. I'm going to go ahead and remove the 10 millimeter. And we're going to run our ground wire up to this point. and we're going to put the 10 millimeter back on and tighten it. We're going to make a connection at the white wire of our brake light activation switch. This is the switch that turns on the brake lights when you step on the brake pedal. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to unplug the switch. I'm going to press the release clip and pull. The we're going to use a posi tap connector. Posi tap connector is a toolless solderless connector that will allow us to make a connection without having crimpers or any tools. So we're going to unscrew the posi tap, put the piece with the groove over the wire, and then we're going to screw the posi tap back together. There's a needle that will pierce the wire. We're going to make sure we don't cross thread it and we don't want to tighten it down, uh, over tighten it. We just want to bring it up to the wire like that. We're going to loosen the collar, posi tap about a turn and a half, and we're going to insert our incoming wire. We're going to take our black wire from our secondary harness and we're going to go ahead and we're going to insert the black wire with about a quarter of an inch of the insulation stripped into the posi tap. 
When we push it in, we're going to feel it bottom out. We're going to push it in a little deeper, and we're going to tighten the collar. You can give it a pull test and plug the plug back into the brake switch. There's two harnesses that come through the door. We're going to pull the larger gauge red wire and we're going to test this wire. We're going to put a test light on it and lock the doors and we want to make sure this is the lock motor wire. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to lock the doors with our remote and we're going to watch the test light. We want to make sure the test light illuminates when we lock the doors with the OEM remote. We're going to make a connection at this wire. We're going to apply a posi tap to our wire. We're going to go ahead and we're going to unscrew the tap. We're going to slip the piece with the groove over the wire. And then we're going to screw the tap back together, making sure we do not cross thread the tap. You're going to locate the activation trigger relay and we're going to connect the green wire from our activation trigger relay to the red wire that we just applied the posi tap to. So again, we're going to loosen the collar, a turn, turn and a half, put the wire in, it'll bottom out, push it in deeper, tighten the collar, and we've made our connection. So at this point, we've only done the bare minimum to give us three locks starting. I'm going to move forward with some enhanced connections after we test remote starting. We're going to plug in our six pin plug. If the vehicle starts, you can unplug the plug and plug it back in. We're now going to plug in our 20 pin plug. And we're going to plug in our activation trigger relay. So we're going to plug it into the three pin black plug adjacent to the 20 pin. We can now test remote starting. I'm going to trigger remote starting by locking the doors three times. Now the remote will not function while the engine is running. So in order to drive the vehicle, you must enter the vehicle using the key while the engine is running in remote start mode. To enter the vehicle, unlock the door using the key. Get in without pressing the brake pedal. Put the key in the ignition. Put the key in the ignition, turn the ignition to the run position, press the brake pedal, the remote starter will turn off, the vehicle will run on the key, you can now drive the vehicle. Keep in mind, your ESC and four wheel drive light may be on because you have the switches unplugged over here. When you plug the switches back in, the error will go away. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to shut the key off. I'm going to move on to uh, some additional connections. We're going to make our lock, unlock, and hatch glass release connections at the black plug. Remember, these are optional connections if you're going to add an RF antenna kit and or a smartphone controller. We're going to unplug the black plug to give us working room. We've removed the plug. I'm going to show you the wires we're going to be connecting to on this black plug. We're going to be comparing your plug to this plug in your instructions and we're going to be matching the pins. The orientation is looking at the plug from the back where the wires enter. So if you look at the wires, at the pins we're looking for there are two wires that come out. So you can connect to either wire for the lock and unlock so this would be the lock, the blue wire, either blue wire, and then this would be the unlock, either white wire, and then right next to it is a red with orange. This is the hatch glass release. 
So like I said, you can match it up to your diagram that you have. I'm going to go ahead and make the connections. So I'm going to apply three posi taps, one to each wire. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stay back from the plug a little bit. I'm going to do the blue wire first. I'm going to put the posi on the blue. Now I'm going to put a posi tap on the white. Now I'm going to put a posi tap on the hatch glass release. Now if you're using a 411, you don't need the hatch glass to pop. Um, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't make this connection. So these are connections are made at, on an as is needed basis. So there are our three posi taps. We're going to go ahead and we're going to connect our wires from our device. So we're going to connect our solid purple wire to our lock wire on our black plug. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to connect our purple into the posi tap. We're going to connect our purple white into the unlock posi tap. We're going to connect our yellow with black to our rear hatch release posi tap. I'm going to tighten the collar, we're going to give it a pull test, and we're going to plug the black plug back in. Don't forget to plug it back in, you'll have a lot of things that will not work if you don't. So most of the Sorrentos that I've seen have a content alarm or a factory alarm. If that's the case, we're going to make two connections at the white plug to the left of the steering column. And it would be the, the white plug that's under the black plug, not the white plug on the side. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to unplug the white plug that's directly under the black plug. So we're going to be looking at the plug from the back where the wires enter. We're going to find these two wires. We're going to find the orange and the green. So I've pulled the two wires we're going to be dealing with. The green wire located here, four pins in on the bottom row, is our arm wire. Our disarm wire is the orange wire at the corner pin right here. Remember, the clip is facing up, no you can't see it, and we're looking at the plug from the back where the wires enter. So we're going to apply two PosiTap connectors. I'm going to apply a posi tap to the green, which is the arm wire. And we're going to apply a posi tap to the orange, which is a disarm wire. So if you're adding an RF antenna kit or smartphone controller, you will need these connections. The basic three lock install, you do not need the connections. So on our harness, we have two wires here. We have an orange and a blue. We're going to connect our blue wire to our green wire on the car. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to strip a quarter inch insulation, loosen the collar, put the wire in the tap, push it in, tighten the collar back up. I'm going to repeat that for the disarm wire, which is our orange wire, to the vehicle's orange wire. Now remember, do not forget to plug this plug back in. Make sure they lock. We don't want to plug them halfway in. So we're going to make a connection at our parking light activation switch plug, which is right here. We're under the steering column. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to unplug the white plug. So we're going to match our plug to the diagram, just like we've done with all the other plugs. And we're going to have our parking light uh, plug here. So we're going, to, we're going to look and we're going to see we need the center right here, the center pin of the plug on the bottom row, and it should be white as it says in the instructions. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to easily locate the white wire right here on our plug. 
So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a PosiTap connection at this wire. So we put the PosiTap piece with the groove over the wire just like we did on our last uh, five connections here. We're going to screw the tap together. Our needle is going to pierce the wire. We're going to loosen the collar. Uh, we're going to route our single uh, pink wire up to this. We have two wires left. We have the parking lights and the horn. So what I did when I set up the harness is since they both in the steering column, I ran them together. So the pink wire is the parking light wire. This orange with black is the horn. So we're going to go up from behind up here and we're going to run the wire up because we're going to follow the factory routing when we're done and we do the zip up. So I'm going to remove the insulation. Install the wire into the posi tap and then I'm going to remember to plug in the connector. If we don't plug in the plug, we're not going to have any parking lights here or headlights or anything that this switch controls. So now we're going to connect the horn wire and if you look in the diagram they put the horn wire uh, plug up here. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to locate the horn wire plug. It's right next to this yellow plug. The yellow plug's airbag stuff. We don't want to touch that. We're at the white plug here. What you can do before you make the connection is sound the horn, pull the suspected plug out, try to sound the horn again. If the horn doesn't sound, we know we have the right plug. We're going to go ahead and we're going to get a little bit of this insulation uh, covering off so we can make our posi tap connection to the horn. So if you look at the instructions, it's saying that the horn is the corner pin on the top row. So if we have the plug orientated like this, only one thing, it says that it should be a white wire and what we have at this pin location is light blue with black. So pin location is uh, the way you do it, not wire color. So when we have a situation like this where it deviates from the plan, then we're going to test our wire. We're going to put a ground signal through our test light on the horn activation wire. It's hard to do it with one hand, so I'm going to I'm going to put both hands in here and the tablet's going to flop around a little bit. Okay. So you, you can see that this is the horn wire. So like I said, pin location is more important than wire color. So when you have a situation where the color doesn't match, then you must do a test. When the color doesn't match, it could also indicate you're on the wrong plug looking at the wrong wire. I'm going to apply a posi tap to our horn trigger wire. Let's stay back off the plug a little bit. Loosen the collar and uh, along with our parking light wire, we have our orange with a black stripe. We're going to go ahead and we're going to make the orange and black stripe connection at the posi tap on the horn activation trigger. Give it a pull test, plug it in. Now, I'm going to use the 441 RF antenna kit because it has five button remotes and is capable of popping the hatch. You don't have to. You can use the 411. You can use a MyCar smartphone controller. I'm going to show you the example of the 441 and then I'll show you an example with the MyCar smartphone controller. But this is the full blown system. If you want to make all the connections, these are all the connections that you could possibly need for this job. I'm going to give you a, a shot from outside and we're going to do some testing. So we're outside the vehicle. I'm going to show you how the uh, RFK441 multi-button one way will work with the vehicle going to lock the doors. We want to hear that it's locked. We press it again. We'll get a horn honk confirmation. I'm going to press unlock. Once we'll unlock it silently. Twice will give us a horn honk confirmation. Pressing and holding the lock button will give us a panic feature. Pressing the lock button again will turn off the panic. We're going to start the engine by pressing the power button. We're going to hold it for a few seconds until the parking lights come on. Now the locks will work while the engine is running if we're using the aftermarket remotes. 
Now we're going to shut the engine off. We're going to press the function button and the power button. Oh. Okay, I didn't press the power button uh, when I after I press function. We're going to release the rear hatch glass. Now you're not going to see it, you're going to hear it, so listen. You can hold it for a long press. There we go. So you've seen the light confirmation and we heard a click. That was the hatch glass opening. You may have to unlock the doors with the remote before you can pop the hatch. So I'm going to add the smartphone controller instead of an RF antenna kit. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plug our blue plug into the blue port on our unit. And the blue port is where the antenna kit or the smartphone controller will plug in. So it's always the blue port right here, four pin blue port. We're outside of our 2008 Kia Sorento. We have our My Car app up and running. We're going to send a lock command. Our doors are locking. We're going to send an unlock command. If you notice, you got confirmation on the screen. I'll go over the different icons and what they mean. There's the unlock command. We're going to start the engine. Now we're going to shut our engine off. We have our runtime countdown. Have this set for 15 minutes. We're going to go ahead and we're going to shut the engine off. Okay. Now this is signal strength, battery voltage, runtime, temperature inside the vehicle, lock, unlock, start, and turn off. And we also have GPS tracking. I'm going to go ahead and do that. That's where the vehicle is. And there's one other feature we have is the rear hatch release. So we're going to go ahead and... And there's our rear hatch. Now remember, if you're doing the three lock remote start from the OEM remote, that function will stay working as long as you have the activation trigger relay and you've made the proper connections, you'll be able to always start it with the three lock also. Now this is what it looks like with the parking lights connected. And remember, the remote doesn't work while the engine's running. You have to get in the vehicle with the key. So I've disconnected a few things so I can do my wire rounding and make everything look really nice. So what we're going to do is we're going to go for a mounting location being right up in here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use a 14 inch zip that comes with the kit. And I'm going to go around this bracket here. And I'm going to go ahead I'm put it here. I'm not going to tighten it all the way up until I'm done because I need to get to some plugs on the top. But this is this is a good mounting point uh, for the unit, a good spot, so that you know we don't have any interference problems when we put it back together. I'm going to get a zip down here around the 20 pin. And then we go ahead and I'm going to route my wires over and plug them back into the Evo um, so that everything's nice and neat.